Audi in Latin means listen, and if there's any Audi that you need to listen to, it's this one right here. All right, let's go. Left foot on the brake, gas all the way down, let it build, 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 release. Oh my God. That sounds great. My name is Omar, and this is the Audi RS3. Now I have a very special place in my heart for small cars with lots of power that are really fast and the Audi RS3 is just that. In fact, it's so fast that it set a lap record for compact cars on the Nürburgring with a time of 7 minutes and 40.748 seconds. And if you're like, cool story bro, that doesn't really matter to me, you're right. Not many people buying this will really care about that figure. What will matter to them is that this can do 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds and I believe Car and Driver did it in 3.3 seconds which is absolutely insane. You have a top speed of 155 miles an hour, but if you want to go faster, you can throw on a package for around $5,000 and have a top speed of 180 miles an hour. Yeah, in this tiny little car. And the reason this sounds the way this does is because of that 2.5 liter, five cylinder turbo under the hood, that's good for 401 horsepower and 369 pound feet of torque. Now I've driven the outgoing Audi RS3, and that was a really fun car. I mean, this one here just makes seven more horses than that one, but this one just feels tougher and more fun to drive. And that's because there are a few changes here, but the most significant being a torque vectoring rear axle, or as Audi calls it, the RS Torque Splitter. What that does is it gives the new RS3 an electronically controlled twin plate clutch on each drive shaft, meaning this is able to send 100% of the available rear torque to either of the outside rear wheels, which yeah, will help you kill that understeer when cornering. In English, that means if you go really fast into a left turn, the RS Torque Splitter sends torque to the right so you stay planted. And that's very similar to what the Golf R can do. And this also has a drift mode like the Golf R, and that's because it does share a lot with that car. However, this has something that the Golf R doesn't. It's got more power from that five cylinder. That sounds absolutely incredible. God, I love that sound. Of course, Audi also made some other changes and not to mention this is more luxurious. But yeah, this really goes head to head with the AMG CLA 45 and the BMW M2. And if you know me by now, I love both of those cars. But is the Audi RS3 better than those two? Let's find out. Let me give you a quick tour of the new RS3. I'll show you all the updates on the outside and the inside. We'll talk more about how this drives. And then I'll give you my opinion on whether or not if you should buy this over the CLA 45 and the M2. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. All right, let's go do this. All right, let's do it like we always do and start off with the pricing so you have an idea of what you're working with as I point out the features and options that you have here. The RS3 starts at 58,900, which is 13,000 more than the S3. Now, in terms of rivals, this is priced similarly to the likes of the AMG CLA 45, which starts at 55,900, and I'm sure the new BMW M2 will start around the same. But as tested here, you're looking at 65,400, and as we go along, I'll tell you what options I've added onto the base price of my test model here. That said, let's get into checking out the new RS3, starting off with the outside, because there's more interesting stuff happening outside than inside. Now, personally, I think the RS3 looks awesome. It's one of the few Audis, well, besides the R8, that differs itself from the rest of the lineup. Of course, I wish we got the RS3 hatchback here in the United States, but apparently luxury brands like Audi, BMW, and Mercedes feel that hatchbacks won't sell much here. They might dilute the brand. I don't know what it is, but we don't get the love of hatchbacks here in the US. That said, I think this looks a bit beefier and stronger than the CLA 45 and the current M2, and we'll see how this stacks up against the new M2 when that comes out. Now, by far, one of the coolest things about the exterior of the RS3 are the lights. Of course, what did you expect? This is an Audi. So when you walk up to your RS3 and hit lock or unlock, there is an RS3 sequence that plays on the driver's side daytime running light. Come on, that is so cool. Check it out here again at nighttime. I got a shot of it in the dark, so it's a bit clearer. Once that sequence is done playing, you'll also see a checkered flag because, you know, this is a sports car. On the passenger side, all you'll see is a checkered flag animation. And the cool thing is that the checkered flag remains illuminated as a daytime running light as you're driving along. And of course, the taillights also have their own animation when you hit lock and unlock, and they also have sequential turn signals. But yeah, like I said, the RS3 obviously looks beefier and tougher than the other threes. 
On the front, you have this giant blacked out single frame grill with, you guessed it, a honeycomb pattern. Honeycomb and mesh patterns are really in these days. You also have blacked out air intakes that are much larger than the ones on the outgoing model. Now from the side profile, the RS3 continues looking tougher with significantly flared wheel archers. You also have functional side vents right here. And while we're here in this area, let's talk about the wheel game. As standard, you get 19 inch five spoke wheels, but if you go for the black optic plus package for $750, you'll get the same wheels, but they have a matte black finish to them. This package also gives you completely blacked out Audi rings on the front and the back. And you also have a blacked out RS3 badge on the back right here. It also gives you summer tires and this blacked out roof right here, which I think looks awesome with this color combo right here. Swing around the back and again, it looks really tough. You've got this lip spoiler right here because you know downforce. Imagine if Audi threw a Civic Type R type spoiler on the RS3. That would be pretty funny. And then my test model comes with the upgraded RS Sport exhaust system with black tips for $1,000. Let's take a listen to how they sound. Of course, there is a rev soft limiter. Can't stand that. If I paid for a sports car, I needed to rev like a sports car. But yeah, overall, I really like the looks of the RS3 quite a bit. All right, let's hop inside and check out the interior of the RS3. Now we've been making it work with the last gen since 2015, but Audi has finally gave us a much needed update for the 2022 model year. It still feels pretty minimalistic and clean in here like most Audis, but everything is obviously really, really well put together. You have high quality soft touch materials throughout this cabin here and there. You do have some hard plastic, but that's the case with most cars in this compact luxury segment. That said, I'm really liking some of the unique three specific elements in here. First, the driver's side vents are really focused on the driver. They're placed on each side of the steering wheel and have a floating look to them. And I think it looks cool the way this dash is broken up instead of a single straight dash that's connected to the passenger. Now, a few things that might bother some of you out there. Audi has gotten rid of the volume knob in favor of this touch sensitive dial right here, kind of like using an iPod from back in the day. And I honestly got used to it over time and I kind of like it. It's very easy to use. And then you have this toggle switch gear selector like the ones on new Porsche models. Let me know what you think about these. Not sure how I feel about this. I mean, I'm not sure how I feel about the RS3 not even getting a manual transmission option at all. But of course, you've got some RS specific updates in here, including these seats that are wrapped in fine, soft Napa leather. And I gotta say, they are really, really comfortable. You get eight way power adjustable front seats with four way power lumbar, and you also have memory seats for the driver's side. Both of the front seats are heated as standard, so that's pretty nice, no subscriptions here. All right, let's check out the steering wheel. Now, I will say one thing, this steering is rather large for a car of this size. I wish Audi went with a smaller steering wheel because at times I felt like this was just too big for the RS3. But yeah, the steering wheel, like most other RS models, has an RS button, which will let you toggle between two RS modes, including RS individual and RS performance. You can go through and configure each one of those modes in the infotainment system. RS individual will let you go through and configure a bunch of various things like the torque split that we talked about earlier, the drive, suspension, steering, and more. You can also customize RS performance, but you can't go as deep as individual. And that's because the RS performance already turns on the RS torque splitter. So it's one of the sportiest settings in here. Now you also have another selection down here called RS Torque Rear. And once you hit it, you'll get a warning telling you not to use this on public roads. Why? Well, this mode basically sends 100% of the rear torque to either the left or right side, which yeah, will basically give you some controlled drifting capability. So this is the RS3's drift mode. Other than that, you can use the drive select button down here and circle through three additional driving modes, including comfort, auto, and dynamic. Now, when it comes to the tech, not much to talk about here. Like most Audis, you have the new MMI infotainment system that's housed in this 10.1 inch touchscreen display. You get wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, and then you also get navigation if you add it on as an option. You also have RS specific performance pages right here that will show you how your car is behaving. Now let's talk about the driver assist tech while we're here. The RS3 comes standard with a rear view camera. You don't get a 360 view or a 3D image view. You have adaptive cruise control with lane guidance and lane departure warning. You've got front and rear parking sensors, and you also have park assist, which will allow you to automatically park your RS3 without having to do any work on your own. Now, if you add on the RS technology package for $2,750, you'll get a heads up display as well. That package will also add on the Bang & Olufsen sound system with 3D sound, and it actually sounds pretty impressive. So I definitely recommend this package. And of course, the Audi RS3 also gets the best digital gauge cluster display in the industry, the virtual cockpit display. You have a bunch of information in here that you can circle through. It's very, very informative. And yeah, Audi's full screen map view is one of the best out there. The RS3 here also gets some RS specific viewing modes like the RS runway mode. This gives you a pretty cool looking theme to the gauge cluster with the runway look and some cool shifting lights. By the way, I totally forgot to mention you get a standard sunroof in here, so that's pretty solid. Most cars, you have to add that on as an option. 
All right, let's hop in the back of the RS3 and check out the rear legroom. You have 35.2 inches, which yeah, is not a lot of legroom at all. That's my seating position. As you can see, I've got barely nothing, anything, nothing at all. If you are asked to ride in the back of the RS3, I highly recommend asking the passenger to move their seat up as far as they can and sitting behind them. Let's check out the cargo capacity. You can pop open the trunk by using a button located right here under the Audi logo. And once you get it opened, you have 10.5 cubic feet, which is not a lot. I always leave my Dunkin' Donuts back here, but you do have 40, 60, 60, 40 split rear seats. So you can throw in some longer items if you need to. Now, before I give you my opinion on how it is to drive the RS3, let me put in a few important daily ownership highlights that I love to show all of you. You have four cup holders, two in the front right there, and then you have two in the back in the center armrest, and that's it. Here are the keys to the RS3. You do have a nice little RS logo here on the back and that's it. You can remote start it, but only through the Audi app. You can't do it straight from the remote. Door open and close sound from the outside and from the inside. Very solid. Charging game wise, in the front you're working with two USB-C ports and a standard wireless charger right there. Those that happen to find a comfortable way to sit in the back get two USB-C ports, good for them. Let's do an indicator and horn sound test. Indicator first. Pretty simple. Now for the horn sound. Oh yeah. Small cars with strong horns deserve more recognition. All right, let's go. Man, this thing just pulls, pulls, and pulls. All this for around $59,000. This is a bargain. Now, I've already talked about the whole torque tricks that this thing is capable of, but let's talk about how this drives. Handling wise, this thing is pretty solid. It dances through the corners in a very confident manner. The only thing I will say is that the steering feel is a bit too light for my liking and the steering wheel itself is too big. I wish it was a little bit smaller and a little bit beefier. This seven speed dual clutch transmission shifts really quick as you would expect, so I have no complaints there. The standard brakes that come with this feel pretty strong, but if you want, you can upgrade to the carbon ceramic front brakes and steel rear brakes with the $5,500 Dynamic Plus package. And that's also the package that will increase your top speed to 180 miles an hour, which I don't think anyone will ever hit. Now, besides the crazy performance that the RS3 offers, is it a livable daily driver? Absolutely yes. If you pop this into auto or comfort mode, it calms down and becomes pretty subdued. The suspension isn't that rough at all. It's perfect for your everyday drive, which is pretty impressive considering how get up and go this car is. Not to mention, these seats are actually really, really comfortable. They aren't that crazy bolster, so you might not like that while you're on the track, but for everyday use, they're great. I'm just coming out of a BMW M4 competition with those crazy M carbon bucket seats, which look really cool, but if you drive that for a long time sitting in those seats, that can get pretty uncomfortable. In the RS3, I feel like I can just go for miles and miles and just relax. Now, do I recommend this over the CLA45 and the M2? Definitely. This is probably one of my favorite compact sports cars that I've driven all year. It checks the box in every single category. It will let you go crazy when you really want to let loose. It will become a comfortable cruiser when you just want to relax and it has all the luxury and tech that you can get from Audi. All that for under $59,000 is really impressive. Of course, you can load this up to north of $70,000, but you really don't need to. So in my opinion, as it currently stands, the RS3 is the leader in the segment. BMW is working on a new M2 that should come out later this year, and I'm pretty sure that will push the envelope. Until then, the RS3 is the leader of the pack. Either way, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. My handle is at Omar Drives. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Peace. God, it sounds so good and so fast. Yeah, buy one right now. You won't be disappointed at all, ever again.